the challenge that I've found when people have done this to me is that the notes go faster than you can write because I'm not writing them, okay? So for that reason, I'm going to go through them slowly enough, but I do want you to write them with me because I think it will help you actually absorb it into your brain, okay? So make a subheading somewhere and you can make the title of that subheading the sum of a geometric progression just so I look like we looked at the sum of an arithmetic progression yesterday. And I want you to have a look at how I've set this up. Um, part of why I'm doing it like this is because I'm dropping you into the deep end. Last time we had a look at actual numbers but I'm going straight for the algebra now. So I'm, I'm only talking by the way to sort of kill time for you as you write what you can see on the screen. We're considering a geometric progression that could be anything. It could have any first term. It could have any ratio. But if it is a geometric progression, then the difference, I should say, the ratio from one term to the next will always be r. So you can see I've got the second term being ar, the next term along being ar squared. Why has my last term got n minus 1? Why is that? Yeah, we're not, this guy doesn't have any r's on it, right? So this is term number n on the end, all right? So let's have a think about this guy. Now, like we said before, we denote a sum with, oh, Mrs. Lees, can we slow the fans down a little bit? <laughs> Thank you. Um, we denote the sum with an S. Uh, you'll sometimes see a textbook will call this a partial sum because, um, well, you go to a certain part of the series. You don't go forever. Okay, we'll get to that later. What I want to do with this is try and understand how can we play a similar kind of algebraic trick like we did the, with the arithmetic progression so I can write this in a succinct way. Okay, so here's my first question. I've got my dot, 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 which indicates some number of terms in here. For reasons that become clear in a second, I actually want not just the last term, but I want to write down the term before it, and you're going to write this on your next line. What would be the term immediately before this one? What would be the term before? What do you think, Zaki? It would be AR n minus 2. AR n minus 2. How did Zaki get n minus 2? What did he do to this term to get that term that he just said? Did he add one? Mm -hmm. uh, I think he actually did the opposite of that. I think he subtracted. Think about this, right? Um, I'm trying to go from one term to the previous term. Yeah, yeah. so if I went forward, I'd, I'd add one. But in fact, if I subtract one from this, I get n minus 2. Are you with me so far? Okay, so there is an n minus 2 hiding there. I just chose to include it in the dot, dot, dot. Okay, so you want to have this on your next line. Now, what I want to do with this line, which is your second line of working, okay, is I want to make it so I can collapse this together. I want to be able to simplify things out. And I have like a bunch of terms here. Um, it, it won't do to just turn it backwards like I did yesterday. Um, you can make a copy of it and turn it backwards. It ends up being not very useful. Here's what I'm going to do. The trick with the arithmetic progression had to do with addition because it was a series that we made from adding. This is a series that we've made from multiplication. So my trick is going to be to do with multiplication. I'm going to take every single term on this line. By the way, I'm just talking to kill time so you can write the whole line. And I'm going to multiply through by that common ratio, by r. Okay? Just before I show you what it's going to be, think about what you predict happens next. When you multiply every term by r, how will they be different? How will the indices change? Hmm. When you multiply by the same base, what do you do with the indices? If I had, say, let me get this again. If I had, say, 2 to the power of 3 times 2 to the power of 7, what do you do with those indices? You add, right? You add what those indices are. Now, I'm multiplying by r to the power of 1. So that means what should I do to every indice? I should add 1, which is indeed what you get. Is this, is this what you predicted? Yeah. So every term, you can see the index of r is just sort of pushed up 1. Okay. All right, now, why is this useful to me? Why is this useful to me? Perhaps you're seeing why I, I wanted this extra term here. Do you see some commonalities between the first line and the second line? Yes. I, I hope you see a lot of commonalities. It'll be a little more obvious if I take this same line and I'm going to move everything over to line it up slightly differently. Okay? So just pause for a second what you're writing just so you can see what I'm about to do. Don't worry, you'll have a chance to keep on writing. Look up. I'm just going to move everything along a little bit by sort of one little note. Oh, my thing goes off the screen. Can you see it? 
Yeah. There's the arrow in the end, the front turn. Okay. In fact, I'm gonna. That's gonna be so important. I'm gonna get rid of this and rub off all of this stuff. Okay. Now, that'll give you some time to write. Now, what have I done? It's the same terms, but I've just kind of moved them over, so you can see them lining up. Are you okay with that so far? What I've lined up, and not every term fits, but most of them do, what I've lined up is these identical terms from line one to line two. You okay with that? The AR and the AR, AR squared, AR squared, and so on, okay? So you can see all of these guys that are identical. So far, so good? Now what I want to do is take advantage of the fact that because I have so many things that are identical, I can get rid of all of those identical terms <coughs> If I, bless you, if I take one line and subtract the entire next line, let me say that again. I'm going to take this whole line and subtract every term from this line. Are you okay with that? This is a bit, a bit like simultaneous equations. You know when you're like solving by elimination? That's kind of what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to eliminate all of these guys, okay? So I'm going to do this part slowly because I know there's a lot to write, right? I'm going to uh, include some zeros to make my subtraction a bit easier. You add zero, nothing changes, okay? So I'm going to do the first line, take away the second line. First line, take away the second line, okay? And I'm going to do it term by term so you can see it for me. This is just what happens when you take the left-hand side of the first line and you take away the left-hand side of the second line. So far, so good, okay? And I'm going to do it for every single other term, right? Here comes the first pair of terms. A take away zero, right? First take away second. Here comes the next pair. Again, first take away second. Are you starting to get a sense of the pattern now, right? I am going to have to keep on doing this for every term. Are you getting the idea? Can I put the rest of them on now? Okay. So when I do the entire line, take away the entire next line, then this is what you end up with. Okay. Um, just like here, because I've got this dot, dot, dot in the middle, I've got a dot, dot, dot in the middle here. Okay, but this is what we've got. Are you all right with that? I know that's a lot, but that's because I don't know how many terms there were, I just had to write all of them. Okay, now what's great about this is how much of this collapses, how much of it just sort of disappears, right? Um, all those zeros, they're gone. Um, all these things where I've matched up the color, they're all gone as well, right? So where do we end up? What actually gets left behind? Um, a minus A R N. Yep, that A, nothing pairs up with it to cancel it out. And then the other guy that doesn't get canceled out is yeah, A-R-N. So this is where we end up. 